Well, remembrance and speculation as our nation honors the victims of September 11th and once again mourns their passing. New questions emerging about who we really can trust. Good Monday afternoon to you. I am Dylan Radigan in New York, and today the Ground Zero Memorial officially opened to the public. Tonight, Congress will gather on the steps of the Capitol, just as they did after the attacks. And while the psychological scars do remain, so too do questions, too many and too abundant, about the actions of our own government both before and after the attacks. You and I both know there has been a lot of conspiracy talk about 9-11 over the past decade. But there is one theory that has hard evidence to back it up. It involves the Saudi royal family. The Saudi, a, a unrelated Saudi family connected to it, a quick getaway, a secret investigation that no one, not Congress, not the 9-11 Commission, no one knew about, was never introduced into the research field until now. It was mentioned on this program first on Friday. I wanted to amplify it today as our lead. With us to expand, former Senator Bob Graham, who co-chaired the Congressional 9-11 Inquiry, which sent its report to the 9-11 Commission. He was ultimately forced to write this book, which I suggest you read. It's called Keys to the Kingdom. It was written as a fiction to avoid being forced through intelligence and security services to redact his Saudi concerns to connections to terrorist funding. Rejoining us on, from Friday, the man who broke the story of the never reported Saudi family in Florida tied to the terrorists, Anthony Summers. His recently published book, The Eleventh Day. It is a pleasure uh, to welcome both of them back to this program. And Mr. Summers, please clarify for all of us what it is exactly that you discovered and, and, and why it's relevant. In a nutshell, I was following up a lead that I'd had during the writing of The Eleventh Day but could only write a little on. After the book was published last week, I got to Florida and I located the counterterrorism agent who explained to me that there was a major investigation that involved very much the FBI, uh, which has been completely concealed. The investigation concerned a Saudi couple who lived in a gated community near Sarasota who left on August the 30th, just two weeks before 9-11, leaving their house as if they'd just gone out um, to get the groceries or to go to a movie. They'd completely abandoned it, leaving a newly bought PT Cruiser in the drive, cars in the drive. What is the relevancy, though, of a given Saudi family's being at home or not? Because after they'd gone and when the FBI investigated, according to multiple sources, including my counterterrorism agent, they found that the phone records, when analyzed, and most important, the gate records at the gated community... Physical visitors? Yes. Um, of cars that had come and gone and had to say who they were going to Understood. see. That they photographed their registration plates, they took their names in some cases, and they discovered from these sources that three of the pilot hijackers involved in, in the 9-11 attacks had all been in touch with the Saudis at that house. Was there any evidence that that family had any relationship to the administration or government of Saudi Arabia? The wife, uh, there was a couple, and the wife of the couple um, talked extensively to a neighbor um, saying that they were very important people in Saudi Arabia and they were connected to the royal family. Uh, Congressman Graham, the information of the, the, that we just heard, uh, there's another family I understand in California that has uh, had an association uh, with the, the terrorists themselves. This information about de f Saudi families in America was not included or revealed to you at the time of your, your inquiry, is that correct? That's correct, uh, Dylan. Uh, actually, in San Diego, uh, there was a man and a circle of his friends. The man was described by the FBI as being a Saudi agent. His purpose uh, in San Diego was to monitor Saudi students to uh, assure that they weren't plotting to overthrow the monarchy. Uh, but in January of 2000, he got a second assignment, which was to provide protection uh, for two Saudis who had just entered the country. Uh, he uh, was encouraged to invite them to come to San Diego. They did. Uh, he provided them money, a place to live, flight lessons, and an infrastructure 
of the Muslims in San Diego to give them protection and anonymity. Uh, these uh, two individuals were on the plane that flew into the Pentagon. The two individuals in California that were the host family in California perished on the Pentagon airplane. Is that correct? No, no. The the two. Uh, Saudis the two who had entered the Got country. Well, but where yeah, the are the two family? Hijacked. But where uh, but, are the and, families? And then the, uh, well, that's uh, similar to the situation in Sarasota. Shortly before September the 11th, the man, the agent, whose name is Omar Bayoumi, uh, and his family left San Diego and went to Birmingham, England, uh, where they, he was allegedly going to be a student. They stayed there for a few weeks and then left and went back to Saudi Arabia. But was any of the information at the time of the 9-11 inquiry that you ran, or, or that you co-chaired, excuse me, uh, or the 9-11 commission, which then took the input from your inquiry, then was drafted through the White House under President George W. Bush that was published, did either of those documents, the research document that you co-chaired or the published document that resulted from that research after editing, include references or interviews with either of the Saudi families in question that were uh, clearly associated with the terrorists? As to Sarasota, no. Uh, as to San Diego, yes, but not because the FBI gave us the information. Uh, we had a very uh, curious and uh, effective investigator who found all this information about uh, how two of the future hijackers had been invited to and sheltered uh, in San Diego. At, at the end of the day, Anthony, we know 15 of the 19 hijackers were of Saudi Arabian descent. We know that Osama bin Laden, at his origin, was a member and inherit, an inherited a portion of the oil money of the Saudi royal family and explicitly uh, argued for uh, a wealth transfer in that nation as a Robin Hood-like figure with the, the impoverished of Saudi Arabia early on. And, at this, and we now have all these other relationships, and yet the American people have never been given a clear resolution of the America, Saudi Arabia, Osama bin Laden relationship, and instead have been focused, obviously, and been told to focus on Afghanistan and Iraq. That has always confused me. Do you have any understanding as to why it is we cannot get an explicit resolution of the obvious association between Saudi Arabia and, the, and, the, and, and these terrorists? One can speculate as to the reason as to why President Bush wanted the Saudi information covered up. Um, the reason, I think, is that the oil connection proved more important than finding out the truth about 9-11. But what's important now is that what we know has been redacted, has been withheld, should be released. And, and, I, and this is where I want to end it. There is more information available about what the relationships are, uh, so we're not all subjected to my idle speculation or anybody else's, Senator Graham. Tell us what information is that actually exists and how we might acquire it. Well, one, uh, in the final report of the congressional inquiry, there was a chapter which primarily related to the Saudi role in 9-11 that was totally censured. Every word of the chapter uh, has been withheld uh, from the public. Some of the other questions that we ought to be asking is, if we know that the Saudis who lived in San Diego and now apparently in Sarasota receive substantial assistance, what about the Saudis who lived in Phoenix, Arizona, or Arlington, Virginia, or Patterson, New Jersey, or Delray Beach, Florida, which were th other major sites uh, of extended a hijacker residence. Uh, what was happening in those places? Uh, and, and you're saying you believe that the information exists in either redacted FBI documents I'm, or censured documents to answer those questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, I believe that these are questions for which there are definitive answers, but the American people and largely their elected representatives have been denied that information. And who has the power to release that information and what can an average citizen do to encourage the, the, the increased visibility that we might all benefit from? Uh, the President of the United States, and I have called uh, his terrorism advisor, laid out uh, what we now know as to what occurred in Sarasota and urged uh, him to pursue an investigation of these matters, uh, both in Sarasota and elsewhere where there are unanswered questions, uh, and then hopefully release that information to the American people.
Well, you have my assurance, uh, both of you, that I'll maintain my attention and my flashlight, my spotlight on this uh, subject. I hope that both of you will keep me apprised of the progress, and please let us know if there's anything we can do journalistically to rattle the government cage, as it were, to see if we can get a little more information off the tree to see what we're actually dealing with. Uh, congratulations to you on the reporting, Anthony, and the book. And Senator Graham, thank you so much for continuing to be such a vigilant and focused voice uh, on this critical uh, American issue. Thank you, sir.